I became interested in the topic of basic income and the, the um, link between income and health, largely due to my almost 30 years practicing on the front lines as a physician. When I trained in medical school, we didn't actually talk about anything to do with where people came from. We talked about their bodies and we talked about their anatomy and disease states, but we never actually talked about how one disease uh, is different uh, in one patient and different in another one because of where they come from and how they live. And we didn't actually talk about health in the larger um, uh, idea beyond actually just a disease. So after working for a few years, I actually um, started to notice in my patients, a lot of whom were um, quite uh, marginal, marginalized and living in poverty, I became to, became to see that many of them actually um, had become ill um, for many reasons that were probably quite avoidable. The most important reason was that people just did not have enough money to actually provide the things they needed, such as housing and uh, development for their children at a very young age, and also food. I work actually largely with um, indigenous populations uh, in northern Canada, and many of them are, are much influenced by these factors. They've had much uh, cultural appropriation from the effects of British colonialism, and they've also had a loss of culture. These in themselves are important risk factors for development of disease and, and loss of someone's health. And the Canadian Medical Association started actually researching the effects of um, income and poverty and other social determinants of health um, on people's actually health and health outcomes. What we found is that in the healthcare system, your health outcomes are only determined 25% by the medical care that you receive. Another 15% is actually determined by your individual biology, about your family history and uh, whether you have a gene for cancer or for cardiovascular disease. And another 10% is actually informed by those environmental factors around you, such as air quality and uh, climate. And this will become more important as we see climate change uh, um, becoming more um, prevalent around the world. What actually stunned me was to find out that 50% of anyone's health outcomes is likely to be determined by the social determinants of health. So when we talk about the social determinants of health, we refer to a lot of things, but by far the most important one is your actual income level. There are other issues such as your, your race, uh, whether you're an immigrant, whether you're a refugee, whether you actually are homeless or have housing, and whether actually you were able to have any kind of education. But by far and above, income is the actually most important factor on someone's health. What we've also found actually, and this is not uh, new to many people in this field, but actually was uh, quite amazing to me, was the actual um, gap between the rich and poor, that relative gap uh, in income, was also a huge uh, factor in the health outcomes of any given country. Now Canada is one of the wealthiest countries on earth, but we are certainly not one of the healthiest if you measure all the World Health Organization's um, definitions of health. So we actually have fallen far behind many of the other developed countries uh, in our health outcomes. And that's not due to lack of spending on health. In fact, we actually spend uh, large amounts of money per capita on health, second only to the United States. What we have found, though, is that our health outcomes are worse. And this is because we have not addressed many of those social determinants of health. And we also, like the United States, have one of the largest gaps between the rich and poor in the real income levels. So these are areas where we need to start to developing public policy. I'm a big believer that public policy is actually necessary to change many of these um, issues, many of these problems. We need to look at social initiatives as actually being investments rather than a drain on government coffers. So once we have our mindset change, we need a whole paradigm shift around this, where we take money that we would normally spend on something else from our government and we actually invest that money upstream into those factors that lead to poor health outcomes. 
I also believe in grassroots involvement and I think it's the responsibility of every single person in Canada to address the issues and elsewhere whatever country you live in to address the issues of poverty and the issues of um, a basic income that's actually a decent living for people to survive on. Unless every one of us gets involved in this, we really are not going to be able to make any difference. I have been asked what's the point, it seems useless, we've been talking about this for years, but I'm actually an optimist. I think we're at a, a time where people are actually um, talking about this beyond the um, small activist groups and the academics. This is starting to become a mainstream topic, it's all over the media, politicians are fa uh, um, finally starting to pay attention to these issues. And so I think the time is now for us to get a big collective groundswell of people interested in this. We have to all get together, all of us, whether we're academics, whether we're politicians, and whether we're just ordinary citizens who have a neighbor who's challenged in their life. We all have to get together and I think the time is now to actually address this basic in income level in Canada and everywhere else in the world. Thank you, Dr. Wright.